Hello. I am coming at you from a different location, obviously. Uh, I am outside. I woke up this morning and I've just not been feeling very good lately, mentally. Um, and so, it's self-care Sunday and usually what I do is clean my house to kind of set myself up to be successful throughout the week. But cleaning just felt like it would take the last bit of my energy and I was just feeling super emotional and when I'm emotional I like to go and look at the water. So that's what I did. I drove out to the beach. Um, I apologize if it's too loud. I tried to adjust the mic settings so that hopefully it wouldn't bother you as much. I'm trying to sit in the most secluded spot on the beach, which is like the rockier areas. Um, but that also means the sound of the wave crashing on the big rocks is much louder than when it crashes on the sand. So, yeah. Um, these types of videos are very strange to me. I don't... Obviously, I'm still very new to making videos, and especially very new to anyone watching them, having any kind of audience. So, it's a little bit bizarre, I guess, to make a more vulnerable type video. Number one, because I think me, myself, as a person, I'm not particularly open to many people about how I'm feeling. I don't know, I don't really share much, which sometimes I forget that because I am very open with the people uh, that are in my life, and so I often think I'm a very, very open person, but then I realize that I actually don't have any acquaintances or friends or social life because I don't really let people in that often. There are a couple people here. Uh, so these videos are kind of strange because it feels fine for me to share a lot while I'm filming them because it's just me talking to myself. But then as soon as um, it gets posted to the internet, then really anyone can see it, strangers and even more intimidating um, people that I know. But yeah, I I don't I don't love. I think it's it's very vulnerable, and um, to let people in on your mind and it gives room for judgment and um, I guess I don't know. So those are just my thoughts. The ocean for me always feels like the best place to be when I'm emotional because it, I think it's like the perfect physical embodiment of how emotion feels. It's the per perfect physical embodiment of how emotion feels because it's dark and mysterious and dangerous kind of depressing but also extremely beautiful so it feels when you're around water when you're feeling this way it just feels less lonely I guess Unfortunately, that is something that is very prevalent in my life at the moment. 
especially at the very present moment. Um, I have a very small circle of people that I trust. I have my dad, and my boyfriend, and my best friend. And when they're all busy, here I am, <laughs> alone. I don't really know why people like being alone, I guess. I don't, it's probably like an attachment style. And also probably like other external experiences built up. Anyway, um, I hope all of you are having a very good day. I hope the water sounds aren't so extremely aggressive that it isn't relaxing. They're very loud today. It's not as calming as white noise machines make it out to be. <sighs> this, I find this month particularly hard. December. I think there's a lot of stress about obviously like materialistic needs, capitalistic ideas, which my brain finds especially stressful, but also just money and everything to do with it. I find December I almost completely lose myself due to it. It's just kind of, kind of consumes me really. I don't like it. I don't like the constant chasing lifestyle. I don't think my brain does well with it. I think I have a hard time being happy. And that lifestyle is really just designed to feed on your unhappiness already. Because you always need to want for more, work for more. do more, be more, and I'm having a hard time just being as it is, so, I wish I liked being alone more, I've always been a very codependent person, especially when I was a child, I, I had really bad separation anxiety, abandonment issues, I guess, and when I moved away to Europe, it was the first time ever that I had to be alone and I really enjoyed it. I had like the best time ever with myself, and it felt so freeing to feel that way, uh, but then something happened and just kind of discouraging, I guess, when, I don't know, when, like, your first kind of trip out of the nest, something spoils it and makes you never want to leave again, I guess. But, life goes on. It's funny how much better I feel out here than back home. I think it's because you have no choice but to just be, you know, to just sit. I don't wish I was walking or I'm just happy to be here presently. I think being outside is kind of like forcing a mindfulness attitude upon you. Sometimes I need to be forced into it, I guess. It's very beautiful today. Although, I guess it's kind of not. It's kind of a drizzly, cold, snowy, gray day. But for some reason, when you're outside and you're looking at the water and the rocks and the trees, 
I don't think there's any water, any, I don't think there's any weather that doesn't suit it. It all feels beautiful in those surroundings. Feels like it's only in like man-made situations that feel ugly and sad. I feel like I'm having a very angsty, emotional moment right now. This is my angst era. I don't know if anyone else has these thoughts where you want to feel better and you know there are things that you can do to feel better, but you also want to process and acknowledge your emotions. It's a very hard balance to strike because I feel like sometimes it can kind of feel like pushing things under the rug. And for me, I don't do very well with that. They always boil up to the surface. I like being outside, but I don't like walking. And it's not because I don't like, it's because I don't like the temperature of my body when I walk. Especially in the winter, but even in the summer. I've got a lot of temperature regulation issues. I don't like being cold, and I don't like being hot. And outside which to most does not feel like a very productive activity but I think that's what I like about it just sitting a lot of people like to walk and hike I find that when I walk and hike it takes away from what I'm supposed to be feeling or seeing when I'm outside because your body is generating so much heat when you move and you're in these winter clothes because it's cold outside and you just get so hot and I don't like it all I feel when I walk and when I'm hot is that I'm uncomfortable and it really takes away from what I'd like to be feeling I guess I feel like that's a very sensory issue to bring up but yeah Gratitude journaling is something that I know helps and I would like to do more of. I am grateful for lots of things. I'm grateful for the big things like my health and that I have food in a warm home and so much privilege and a good family but I'm also grateful for very bizarre shallow things like I bought a sweatsuit and it was too big but then it shrank in the wash so it just kind of fixed itself which made me feel so good and my boyfriend's mom bought us an advent calendar and so every day I get to wake up and eat chocolate which is probably my favorite thing in this life I feel happy that I live somewhere with the water that I know I'm happy that something so beautiful feels like home to me Living in a rural part of, I was talking to my childhood friend um, about growing up where we grew up because um, my dad's side of my family is from that area of Nova Scotia, and they were all born, raised there, and my dad was born there, but he moved away for a bit, and. Um, I moved there with my dad when I was, I want to say seven or eight, and 
I moved back to the city when I was going to high school. So I went to the high school in the city. But my friend is born and raised there. Generations and generations go back there. So it's very interesting how different experiences have. She gets to experience a lot of the generational trauma, I guess, that I don't. Because although I long and miss for that place desperately, I got space from it, which probably resulted in me having positive memories towards it. Where she felt the need to escape, I suppose. But I was talking to her about how connected you feel with your culture and your family and your roots, I guess. I think that's a really nice feeling. I feel that way about this province so much, actually. Growing up, my parents were divorced, so kind of lived all around, really. And I would drive back and forth across the province every week. split custody drive but it's such a gift to live somewhere that feels like this that feels this safe and comforting I don't particularly like the, c the city elements I don't like Halifax I think to be honest it's because I don't make anything of it but it's because the things that I would make of it, I don't desire or value. Like I could get into the music scene of things or create more art or go to places and have a social life, but I find those things are very fast paced and go in line with the fast-paced style of life, which, to be honest, I feel like I'm constantly running away from, which is probably the reason why I don't partake in those things. Who's that truck? Please don't come out of your truck and see me making an ASMR video, sir. Anyway, I don't like fast-paced life. I wonder if most neurodivergent people feel this way, or it just feels like the world isn't made for you. There's nothing for you to benefit from. The constant chasing. It just kind of feels like you're set up for failure, really. But that's not to say there isn't a lot of joy. It's just hard because I feel like you're always on the outside of things looking in or trying to be quote unquote normal because that's what you think you need to be when in reality I think everybody's differences and everybody's the way everybody's brains work should be accepted and um, included really. I don't like the idea that we're all the same because the thing that makes us all the same is that we're all individuals, really. These are very deep questions. And I don't even think I feel this way. I just think I'm shooting the shit, really. Kind of just saying whatever comes to mind. Let's see. I have any stories. This woman is coming back over again. It's like, go away now. I don't want you here, girl. Yeah, the place where I used to grow up. Um, it's very interesting because I think one perspective that most of my peers that I have in my life at the moment are friends that I went to high school with or met here, and it's 
very interesting because I definitely by no by no means feel I was ever not privileged. I didn't grow up with a lot of money, but I always had a home and food and I didn't have to worry about a lot of things like that. Maybe I couldn't have afforded like, you know, maybe I couldn't afford, you know. I had the necessities, which at the end of the day is really all you need. And I had more than the necessities at times, so can't complain by any means, but I find it's very different because growing up in that environment, I saw poverty like I've never seen it, really. It was an old mining town. Obviously the mining industry, we all know what happened there. It's just kind of sitting and deteriorating slowly. And I was at the age where you never thought about it. You never thought about people having mud floors or living in trailers. My childhood best friend her bedroom had a giant dilapidated hole in the floor and they just put a piece of plywood over it and you never questioned it. She just said, don't step on the piece of plywood and we did it. So, I don't know. There's a lot of people on food stamps and so I felt extremely privileged for what I had. I never felt like I wanted for anything and there wasn't anything to want really because there was no stores nearby and if I wanted something I'd make it I don't know but I came here and when I moved back for high school it's interesting because just not part of my value system. It's not the way I was raised. It's not the way I want to raise my children. I don't think money is happiness. I think if money is your values, it can certainly lead you on the path to happiness, but I don't believe that money is everybody's values, really. Like, of course, I'd like to have a nice home, and I'd like to be at a place financially where I don't have to worry about it, where I feel I can provide for myself and other, and my children and the people around me and, and feel comfortable, but I don't think I'll ever desire designer bags, and I also don't want to get to a point where I do feel that way, to be honest, because I don't think that would feel like me. Um... I think my therapist always said in my therapist said in regards to relationships specifically that your values are the things that matter that keep you together because your values are the paths that you walk so if you have different values eventually maybe you're walking along the same line for a little while but eventually you just get led somewhere else and that's not about personality differences it's more so like having a family or I don't know being a workhorse really but I think at this age especially there is a lot of imposter syndrome because I'm in my early 20s and I think people are so insecure of themselves at this age because they don't know what they're doing and no one does but every time you meet someone it's like you hear their LinkedIn uh, profile recited to you it doesn't feel like I'm actually ever getting to meet someone or know about their interests it's them trying to sell me on their worth 
but it's not things that I ever value. I don't care about anybody's education or background or desires or master's degrees. Um, I want to hear about who they are as a person, what led them to go on that path. But I think I think everybody is caught up in this giant weird game where you think everybody else is doing better than you, which makes you feed into this kind of, I don't know, which makes you participate in this culture and then someone else will see you, think that you're doing so much better than them and then whatever. Life goes on. Oh, it's starting to rain. I should probably get going soon. This mic and this phone are not going to like the rain. Um, I wish there was more acceptance for people's differences and choices, I suppose. I think it's just a weird area right now, really, where everybody's kind of expected to want the same things, have the same paths. It's just not how humans work. It's just a very existential, existential ramble, really. Oh, you can see the rain. Rain and it's pouring, the old man is pouring. He bumped his head, he went to bed, and he couldn't wake up no more. I should probably show you my surroundings before I leave. It would feel like a waste, wouldn't it? If you didn't get to see where I was sitting. So I'm sitting up against a log. And then here's the water. The trees behind me. This would have been a much prettier shot, but I don't think I could have gotten a distant. <gasps> oh my gosh! Don't tell me that now. Do you like? Do you like that better? I like that better, but it's too late now. I think life is very difficult. I think this helped, though. Feel at peace. Although I'm really noticing the red in my hair right now. It feels very redheaded. I've been kind of wanting to tone it again. I have a really hard time um, telling how loud this video is going to be because obviously I'm hearing the mic noises in my head, in my headphones, my earphones, but I'm also hearing the sounds of the crashing waves all around me in real life, so it sounds very loud, but I'm hoping it would have turned out. These are my mittens. I bought them at a trading post. They were made by a native woman in Nunavut. So, they're very warm. Okay, I'm gonna go now, because there's te teenagers. Teenagers scare me. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye.